In Power Mill 10, we saw a big improvement in the work plane functionality in terms of creating and editing work planes. Power Mill 2010 continues this development with even further new functionality and the introduction of a dedicated work plane toolbar. Let's open a project and take a look at some of these new work plane functionality. The first major difference uh, between Power Mill 10 and 2010 is now we can instrument a work plane at any time by just simply double clicking on the work plane. Those of you who are familiar with the previous version of Power Mill will understand or remember that this was only possible when we were in the curve editor. This limitation now has been removed and we can now instrument a work plane at any point in time while we're working in Power Mill. Once the work plane is instrumented we get the familiar yellow and blue drag handles and using the intelligent cursor we can pick up the work plane and simply hold down the left mouse key and drag the work plane and position it anywhere we like snapping onto key points. You'll also notice that a new work plane toolbar has appeared at the top of the screen containing many new options. We will quickly run through all these options to see what effect they have on our work plane. The first icon opens the position form. Now those of you who are familiar with PowerShape will recognize this form and this allows us to edit the work plane by entering either the X, Y or Z or any combination of those three axes into the form either in a Cartesian method or we can also enter the coordinates in a polar method using an angle and a distance and either elevation or a height. So for example we may be happy with the XY position of our work plane so we can lock those but we want the Z axis to be at the highest point of the part which happens to be on this surface where my cursor currently is positioned and if I click with the left mouse button that point is that position of that point in Z is then pasted into the, the form and the work plane is moved up in Z but X and Y still remains the same The next three icons along allow us to twist our work plane about either the X, Y or Z axis. So if we choose the, the Z for example, you'll notice that again we get the instrumentation appear and we can either enter the angle coordinate with the keypad such as 45 degrees or I can pick up either the yellow or blue drag handles and just simply rotate the work plane using the intelligent cursor to give me feedback on the current angle like so I just cancel that to get back to where we were the next three icons along allow us to change the, the direction of either the X, Y or Z axis so if we click this time click on the X direction Again, this form is familiar to those of you who use power shape. And you can see that the X axis is highlighted on my work plane, indicating this is the current the axis I'm currently editing. And then I can simply align the X axis with the Y, for example, or with the Z. Okay, or I can do a negative Z or a negative Y. As well as that, I can also enter a specific direction if I require in terms of its IJK value or enter the apparent angles. Next icon along again is very familiar to us. It's the rotation icon and this allows me to rotate the work plane about a known point. I can pick up the rotation anchor and reposition that anywhere I like. For example in this corner 
and then I can rotate about that angle like so. If at any time I make a mistake I can simply undo the operation and if I want to change the rotation axis at the moment it's currently Z I simply click on the working plane in the corner here in the status toolbar to change the working rotation axes. Just cancel that. The next icon along allows me to swap the work plane axes. If I zoom in, you can see that every possible option for an axis is drawn on the screen in grey and I then choose what I want to be my Z, X or Y axis. So for example if I want to specify my X axis first and I want the X to go along the Y I can simply click on the Y direction and then that X axis is now fixed and then I can choose the Y axis and then the Z axis will automatically obviously be defined. So let's undo that to get back to our original position. The next icon along is a drop down list with several options. Some of these options are not new options and have been in Powermill for a number of releases such as Align with View and Align to Geometry. But one new option is, to, is the Align with Geometry and Keep Original Position. So you can see here that I have an arrow attached to my cursor which feeds back the current surface normal direction. And you can see when I move the arrow over the part, the work plane also changes to match the surface normal direction in Z, but the actual position, the XYZ coordinate, of the work plane stays where it is. So we're aligning with the feature but keeping the work plane's original position. Like so. Let's just undo that to get back to the original position. Another new feature is the ability to align the work plane to the current tool position and the current tool axes. If we activate this tool path that I created earlier and we're going to attach the tool to a position on this tool path and now we're going to go back into the work plane editor and we have the option to, similar to aligning with geometry, we have the option to align with tool but keep the current position. So here we can see the z-axis is aligned with the axis of the tool but the xyz coordinate origin of the work plane has not moved. The other option would be to align with tool and reposition and there we can see the work plane is positioned at the tip of our tool. The culmination of the development work in Powermill 10 on work planes plus the new features in Powermill 2010 for work plane creation and editing mean that even the most complex of datum setups in Powermill is now simple and easy to do.